to think that four months ago I was homeless and now I'm on the way to opening my own business, that's, that's I think that's incredible, really. <laughs> I was living in my car for about a month. You get down and depressed, you think, you know, where's my life at the moment and what am I doing? Though it's, it's not a great experience at all. I was in Portugal and I left Portugal about eight years ago. Um, and then when I, I studied law over there and then over here, I decided I didn't really want to do law because it sat down at a desk and stuff. So I've done pastry, went to college, done pastry in Manchester for three years and started working in kitchens. I've worked all over the place, really, uh, sort of jumping about everywhere. Being a chef is quite a lonely sort of job. You work um, out in the middle of nowhere. You don't really make, well, you make friends, but you leave them behind sort of thing. And I've also got um, on the spectrum of autism also. So it's been a very difficult journey for me. And there's been, there's been a, uh, addictions along the way. My personal demons were opiates. I would take, let's say, on, on the weekends and then it becomes just one day and then it's two days, becomes three days and then by the time you know it, it alters the way that you are. Um, even in the kitchen, you, you lose your temper more. You, you just, it's just difficult. You just can't manage yourself. And by the time you know it, it, you're on the streets, you know? So I always felt guilty and always tried to on my days off not to use, but it's not as easy as that. You might think, oh, but, you know, it's your choice. But really, when, even if you're not on the spectrum, even if you, you don't have ADHD or some mental um, issue, people still ca can can be drawn to it. But in my personal experience, um, being on the spectrum, it's it's even worse. It, you're really drawn to drugs and just, like, self-medicate. And it does ruin your life, you know? It's, it made me lose my job. And more than once, I've lost my job a f quite a few times um, because of, because of um, opiates. Um, when I became homeless and I was living in my car, I really, I was stuck in a rut, really. Didn't really know what to do. Um, so I've met people at the Hope Centre. I met other organisations, S2S. The whole, the whole community really has chipped in, if you like, and, ha and have helped me. Also, I've helped myself as well. Um, at the Hope Centre, I was told about S2S, so Substance to Solution, so I've been, I've been there, which helped me a lot as well, because now I'm on, on this thing called Naltrexone, so that was really good for me. So currently not drinking, not, no, no addictions, nothing like that. It's, my life's improved drastically, really. When I bake, I feel, I feel happy. That's where I'm more, most comfortable. Um, you can really express yourself, you can be creative. I don't feel... Like, oh, is it time to go home yet? Or I want to be out of here. No, it's, you want to be doing it. It's a passion. It's something that you're, you're happy to do. I would say that there are lots of organisations out there that will help you if you're willing to help yourself. Hope Centre have, have helped a lot, and they still, they still are. They still are helping me. Um, I'm quite fortunate that I've got goals, and in my case, it was the passion to make beautiful cakes. That's what I used to, to inspire me. Even if you're hard working, you don't need to be a lazy person or something like that to be homeless. It, it can happen, you know, but also if it does happen, it's not the end of the world. There are ways to get out of it too.